going on guys welcome back to this video today we're going to discuss practical phishing analysis scenarios but before watching this video i want you to go back to these two videos i have uploaded previously first one is the complete guide to phishing attacks where i explained in detail the structure of a phishing email and in this video i also went over the fish tool phishing email analysis with fish tool i'm going to put these two videos in the description of this video so that guys you have an idea of what i am talking about okay so in today's video we're going to take examples of phishing emails and analyze them using different tools the tools we're going to use are first the fish tool which we have covered in this video and any run any run here uh, actually contains two attachments that have been uploaded by analysts all right so in the first scenario we have the fish tool and we have a sample that has been uploaded now the sample can be found by going to this room and starting the machine you will be able to find the email copy the email uh, somewhere and upload it to the uh, fish tool dashboard technically you can recover this before but anyway i'm going to tell you guys how to do it so from the analysis section you choose file and then you upload the file now the file can be email extension message or text the sample found in this room is with email extension so what you have to do you have to copy the text okay and then paste it in a new file and upload it back to fish tool okay so once we upload the file here you will see fish tool has extracted many important information for you without the need to go through the header of the file for example we can see on the left the headers have been carefully extracted by fish tool so instead of going right clicking and view the header of the email you can see all the information extracted for you here for example here we have the display name the two where the email was addressed to be sent so here is this the recipient the cc if found the timestamp the reply to the return path the return path as you can see it highlights a domain name which is uh, kind of interesting and here the ip address of the sender this is the ip address and what kind of service they use to send the email this indicates they have used google to send the email the received lines represent the hops or the smtp hops uh, that the email traveled through it's like the same as uh, the hops it takes when you send a packet from one destination into another here we have the same thing smtp hops smtp mail servers that the mail have traveled has traveled through x headers the security information here are crafted information from the email such as SPF, the DKIM and DMARC. These are the records, the email records that uh, have been found on the originating domain name. In this case, the originating domain name was this domain name. And they have found that there is no DKIM and no DMARC record. Attachments, if the email has an attachment, it will be here and the message URLs. Here you will see all the URLs that the fish tool was able to extract from the email body. As you can see here, guys, on the left or on the right, we can see the contents of the email. It's clearly pretending to be coming from Netflix. And as you can see, we have one link, which is embedded in a button, claiming to claiming that you have to update your account. Here we can see a plain text render of the email address the html render and we can see uh, the header this is the raw header okay this is the raw email header from here usually without any phishing analysis tools you will have to analyze this header yourself but luckily with tools such as fish tool we can analyze uh, we can extract relevant information from here and have them sorted this way okay 
So let's see what kind of questions we have. What brand was this email tailored to impersonate? It was tailored to impersonate Netflix, as can be seen from the email body. What is the from email address? Now, this is the from email address, but in fact, the sender email address or the address who sent the email, take a look at the email header, we can see. Um, so, this is the domain name, okay, which also represents the SMTB server of the sender. And take a look at this Atlas105 freemail bf1yahoo.com. This looks like the original sender, but anyway, you can extract it from here. This is the sender. What is the originating IP? You can also find the originating IP easily by looking at the originating IP field and this is the IP address. Now, this format can be actually uh, done using CyberChef, defining the IP address. From what you can gather, what do you think will be a domain of interest? A domain of interest is a domain name that represents either the sender email address or the SMTB server of the sender. In this case, as you can see, it's not clear what is the domain name. We can right click and perform um, DNS lookup or who is lookup. We can also flag this email as malicious. We can also perform auto analysis. But we want to extract, as you can see here, guys, the question is asking what is the domain name? So we want to find out exactly what is the domain name that the sender used to send this message. We can, use, we can go to security and from the security we can highlight the originating IP and the return path domain value. This value represents the domain name from which the message was originated. This could also be the domain name where the SMTB server of the sender was hosted. So this is the domain name. What is the shortened URL? Now to extract the URLs, we can go to message URLs and we can see this is the domain name and this is the URL extension, this is the query. All of these together can be, or can form the full structure of the URL. Okay. All right, so this is analyzing an email with fish tool. Now in the next task, we analyze an email using Anyrun. I guess this is the one. So what is this? So basically, this is an attachment that has been extracted from an email address. Let's go through the let's go through the order of the flow. So first thing, as you can see, guys, the attachment has been uploaded to when you run and I don't has analyzed the attachment. So the order of or the, the chronological order of events starts with opening the file. As you can see, this is a PDF file that is asking the customer to upload their payment information. Good. Now here we can see this is a pop-up and then, all right, this is the body of the, uh, or this is the contents of the file. You can see guys that it is asking the user to update the payment information with the, uh, yeah, with the red button, update payment account. Now we go forward. So as you can see, this is a browser looks like when you click on the update payment account the browser opens this URL you can see it is a shortened URL and it is not found back to the PDF document they clicked on the link again and we can see another forbidden error and then it directs you to contact us so what really has happened here? So you are clicking on links embedded in a PDF document and then you are getting forbidden error. All right, so we go through the HTTP requests and we scroll down. We can see all the HTTP requests are fine, judging by the green check mark. We go to connections, all the connections the PDF document has made. Scroll down. So all of these looks fine, but look at this. There is a question mark on these connections. Going to adobe.com. 
to this IP address. And we scroll down, we can find similar ones going to this domain name, NFLX. Yeah, this is also suspicious. Scrolling down, we can also see another suspicious domains, ardownload3.adobe.com. So they don't necessarily represent suspicious domains, but there is a question mark here indicating that this is an unknown connection. So we should be worried. The DNS requests, all of these are the DNS requests made to the destination. So it's not really clear whether this activity is malicious or not. That's why the ultimate verdict anyone has given on this attachment was suspicious activity. So we need to analyze more what's going on. It is not malicious and it is not penine. It's, it is suspicious. Threats. There is one threat detected. It is a bad traffic. We click on this and we can find similar or we can find more detail about the traffic. So it was destined to port 443 and uh, that was it. So this is an attachment that is suspicious, right? You can see uh, Netflix doesn't usually uh, require you to update your payment information by sending a PDF document and then redirecting you to non-existent content on the internet. So it is suspicious. Um, what does Enron classify this email as? Suspicious. What's the name? We have already done this. What is the SSJ256 hash? We can find this by clicking on the file itself. A pop up with the details of the information of the uh, file details uh, show up. We can see here these are the hashes. What two IP addresses are classified as malicious? Okay. So these are the IP addresses we have seen earlier. We go back to connections and all you have to do is to copy these IP addresses beside the question mark. The one that ends with 24 and the one that ends with 83. Of course, you're gonna have to define them using CyberChef. And lastly, what Windows process was flagged as potentially bad traffic? So. Upon opening the document, there is a new process that was spawned under the name service host. And it was weird enough, this process, which is assumed or perceived to be a system process, is making connections to this IP address. That's why also this activity is considered as suspicious. So that's the process name. And that is for the scenario. This is the other scenario here, where we have an Excel attachment so let's go through the chronological order of the events we open the file and we can see upon opening the file there is a warning and um, a cmd pop-up and then we have the contents in chinese or japanese i'm not really sure okay and then we also have another sheet and that was it. So, Anyron has classified this file as uh, emitting suspicious or malicious activity. So, we're really sure now that this file represents or contains a malicious activity. So, it's very clear, guys, the malicious activity started right here. It's very weird when you open an Excel, Excel document such as, such as this one, you get... Um, uh, kind of, you know, information and message with a CMD prompt. So there was some process embedded in the Excel document. Let's find out. So in the HTTP requests, we can see all of the requests the file has made. Look at this. The process name is an executable file. So when you open the Excel document, there was an executable file opened as a process. This is the name of the process. And it is actually was found to be making connections to these two URLs, requesting to download a file named covid19.exe and another, another page. These two URLs was found to be malicious, as you can see here. The connections, these represent the IP addresses or the IP resolution of the domain names that was contacted by the process and they also found to be malicious. DS requests and the threats. So we have two threats. The first one is 
potentially bad traffic to the same process that was spawned upon opening the Excel document was exhibiting um, patterns of potentially bad traffic. We can see suspicious GET requests with possible COVID-19 URL. So it was making a request to a URL that is found to be suspicious and this one represents no, uh, uh, that it was found network erosion possible malicious macro oh so this excel document contained malicious macros and both as you can see they make connections to the internet to malicious destinations on the right here we can see the, the details of the process okay and here Look at this, T1203. This is a mitre technique, mitre tactic. And it was the description is exploitation for a client execution. It exploits a vulnerability in these two uh, system executables. The vulnerability was 2017. The date dates back to 2017. And the rest are warnings. Okay, so that's all there is to find about this malicious attachment. Okay, now what is the analysis classified as malicious? What's the name of the Excel file that can be found from here along with the hashes? What domains are listed as malicious? So in total, we have three domains. You can find them from the connections tab. B b's nine holdings find results and w38 find results sites what ip addresses are listed as malicious so we have three domains it means we have three ip addresses it can be found from here and lastly what vulnerability does this malicious attachment attachment attempt to exploit it can be found from here so guys that was it